Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Louis Van Amstel podcast with Louis Van Amstel. Hi, I am here to talk about 1995. And instead of just telling stories and reminisce about my past and let you know all the things I've done with my dance career, but it's also the lessons I've learned and the psychology behind it, because 1995 was a year of triumph. It was, oh my gosh, from my dance career, probably the best year of my career. But also it came with a lot of stress yet again, but the stress was different this time. So I want to just give you a little synopsis. Of course, please watch 1992, 1992 and 1993 and 1994 podcasts, because that will give you better insight on this one. But even if um, you haven't seen the others, I'll give you a little synopsis. So in 1992, I quit my ballroom dance career in the middle of it being in the top three on the ranking list in the world of dance sport. Uh, quit, disappointed a lot of people, but I had to find myself. Then 1993, I danced with someone else, and by the end, I came back to Julie Fryer, um, and then we go back into 1994, back in the game, but it wasn't as easy. But in 1994, October, in Stuttgart, Germany, Julie and I became world champion. Five dances, we lost the first two dances, and we won the last three dances. Majority wins, and... I still remember all these people that said in 1992, your career is over. And now I say to everyone that I can to help, to support, it end over until I say it's over. So becoming a world champion in 1994, whew, amazing. Now, which I did not tell you the psychology behind it. This was in Stuttgart, Germany. And the heavy favorites to win that world championships was the German couple. And guess where they live? Stuttgart. And in Germany, the, you were allowed to actually teach as an amateur. And I believe they even had a dance studio already. And half the people in the audience, probably 750 people from the 1,500 people in the hall, were from their dance studio. And the, the year, pretty much, we ended up uh, being third and second throughout the year. So we went into that world championships with the idea, let's claim the third spot. Let's at least keep the second German couple in Germany behind us. We did not expect to be world champion. So there's the learning lesson in 1994. If you focus on the work, the art, the competition is the work. So you focus on the work, not the numbers, not the judges, but on the work itself. Those five dances, that's what you control. And I believe we were less stressed than the other couples, particularly the German one, because they were in their hometown. They were competing to win. And we were expressing. And the judges put us first. So now I'm going into 1995 because that's what this one is about, but I'm giving you the leeway. Um, so we come home. So the World Championships is on Saturday. We come home on Sunday. Um, a lot of people came to the airport, our friends and all that to celebrate. And we go home and Monday morning we wake up. We did not live together. I mean, we're not a couple, so... Clearly, clearly, right? Anyway, um, so we wake up and I'm getting phone calls. Jew is getting phone calls. Did you see? Did you see? See what? I slept in. We're not doing anything. We're doing jack shit this whole week. We're taking off. We're just kind of taking it all in. We are the new world champions. We did not expect that, but we are enjoying the heck out of it. We apparently were on the front page of the National Telegraph, which is, I don't know, uh, like the New York Times, the Washington Post. What is the biggest newspaper here in the United States? Well, we were on the front page. A Dutch couple wins the world championships. 
And now we got the interviews, the TV interviews. And this is when I had my first experience of what it's like to suddenly be in the limelight. Now, this was 1994. Dancing with the Stars did not start until 2005. That's, of course, since then. I know what it's like to be a public figure. You're watched by millions and all that. But in 1994, um, and also that you now know how I felt in 1992 and then 1993. And oh my gosh, how many emotions can one person experience? But one thing I knew that I was proud as heck for making that decision because that world championship title was won because I was ready for it. I wasn't ready for it before because I would have feel, felt pushed. So, okay, great. And the flowers, the amount of flowers we received, it is absolutely amazing. But here is the other side. And I, I even hate to say this because you might think you are such an ungrateful prick. But both Julie and I talked about this. That Monday, as great as it was, there, was, there were two sides to it. Oh my gosh. We're on, what? The front page? We were standing with our pride. I was kissing Julie's forehead and you could clearly see my ponytail, which I am so fucking proud of. I won with a ponytail, the first one ever. And they said, if you cut it, you would have made the final earlier that year. That's how I feel and I do not apologize for it because ultimately that's pretty much, no, that's not positive. But if someone tells you no, use that. Use that. If that's something you want, oh yes, you do it and no one should stop you. Look, if it is unhealthy, it's a hunter unhealthy choice, but if you choose you and your gut says you need to do something that is against what the majority of people in your life say you need to do, follow your gut. It has served me really, really well, and I think I'm still very grounded. So, that's 20, 30 years ago. So, to the point, the other side. I even had a hard time explaining this to Julie, but then she said the same thing. We felt depressed. And now in hindsight, this is a big learning lesson for me. Why would I feel depressed? I just became world champion. I, by now, I was confident to not put anything under the rug anymore. I was going to face this. Why? Why? And I was digging in a few days later. We talked about it. And I realized what it was. Everyone sets a dream, a goal, a dream. And for us, it was becoming a world champion. And when we got together in 1993, uh, late October 1993, we kind of set a strategy. Well, we probably need a year just to slowly get back in the game. And then, wait, within eight months or within a year, <laughs> We became world champion, so it all came way faster. So be careful what you wish for. Because if your goal is world champion, now you become world champion, none of us, no one thinks, well, what's the goal after that? So, and we landed in a big hole. Now what? We just... We just fulfilled our dream sooner than we expected. And also, I have to give you a side note. If, and I'm just thinking about this right now, when I quit in 1992, April, we were probably going to be third, fourth or third. And then we would wait probably two or three more years which would be 1995 if I would have not quit. But here I was quitting, dancing with another partner, coming back with Julie and world champion a year before it probably would have happened if I never quit. What's the learning lesson there? Do what you feel is right for you because it might come sooner than you think. But I believe it came to us because we weren't thinking 
of the result, we were thinking of what we can produce and control, the dancing itself. So, we were depressed for a few days and we said, you know what, for this whole week, let's just, just not do anything. Let's just give ourselves that week. We deserved it. And we did. And then we sat down. And then we said, okay, 1995. What are we going to do? And it was a little pretty easy. Okay, so there is the national championships, the European championships, the world championships, and then there are the three major championships, Blackpool in Blackpool, the International at the Royal Albert Hall in England, and the International, sorry, the uh, United Kingdom Championships in Bournemouth, which was previously televised by the BBC. If you win all six, you are now the unspoken, it's not an official title, but you are the Grand Slam champion. In tennis, they do that. We don't have such title, but we gave ourselves that title and that goal. Winning every single championships. Because in 1994, we kind of thought, well, were we not just given that world championships? We didn't go in to win. We came in to come back and be in that top three. So now we felt, no, 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 we need to do this and set our goal even higher. Now I had the confidence and I had the willingness to work it. Because again, I will not forget quickly who the people were that supported me when I needed them the most. Well, this dance industry did not. But my mother, my father, Julie, Rude, and then pretty much the dance industry quickly saw that I was very happy as who I was and they could see it in the dancing. So people came around, but it still was a good thing. It was a motivator for me to show them all. Oh, oh, and you think now, oh no, that was just a fluke. You won't be world champion again. <laughs> okay, so 1995, third week January United Kingdom Championships. We go in and win. 1994 United King Kingdom Championships. We didn't make the final because I had a ponytail. I had my shirt like this and I felt more confident. They said if you would have your short hair in a, in a regular shirt or regular costumes, like it's expected of you, you would have probably made the final. Really? Anyway, 1995 United Kingdom Championships. We won. And now we're doing our national championships. Of course, well, <laughs> that would be weird, right? You win a major championships, but you wouldn't win the Dutch championship. So by now, we won all five dances, all first. We didn't lose the second. Um, then we go into the European Championships in Austria. And we take our business very serious. We do not take any result for granted. We went to Switzerland for a week. Uh, this was at higher altitude. We went to Zurich um, to train for a week, get ready. We went to Austria, did the uh, European Championships. Guess what? We won. We go to Blackpool 1995 and we win. Now, the winning streak is very good. It's exactly what we set out to do and I want to say this again. I am now, for me, I am in the driver's seat. No one tells me what to do. I am in the seat and I drive wherever I want. Now, having said that, I trust my coach, Ruth Vermeer and Julie with my life. Of course, I listen to them. We have a very small team, a team of three. Ruth, Julie, and myself. And if we were to take some lessons, they are guest lessons, and we let those people know. We come for one lesson. We want to know what you have to say. We do not come for your marks. We do not come because you're judging us. We come because we want to hear what you have to say. So now throughout the summer, we work hard and we are getting ready for the world championships. Now, and here is another huge lesson why that world championships was stressful, way more stressful than 1994. Why? Well, 1994, we had nothing to lose. We just wanted to stay third and 
we win. So that was a nice little bonus or a major freaking bonus. Um, but now you're going in as the world champion defending your title. Now you are like, no, that trophy is mine and you're not going to take it away. Well, honey, newsflash, you're going to have to dance for it. So now, in my opinion, we have the stress that the German couple had in 1994. And guess what? They were there 1995 because they had never been world champion. So before they turned professional, they wanted to be world champion. So yet again, here we are, the German couple and the Dutch couple fighting it out once again. And before I go into that world championships, I want to give you um, why, besides defending our world title, what was so sentimental for Julie and I is that the world championships was held in the very same place where Julie and I made the very first world champion final when I was 18 years old in 1990. It was in the same town five years later. And here we are defending our world title. In 1990, we were the young spring chickens making that world championships final for the first, for the first time. And now we are in the same town defending our world championship title. How stressful. Yes, you might think, how amazing. Yes, it was. But defending your title, oh my gosh, so stressful. So now we're going into the final. And as I've ex explained in my 1994 podcast, the judges show their visual markings after each dance. Well, first dance, history repeats itself. The Germans win the cha-cha. Dance number one. And here we go. Samba. History repeats itself again. The Germans win the Samba. Second dance. And we are second. Here we go. Rumba. And I can repeat myself again. History repeats itself again. From the seven judges, we got four firsts which makes us the winner of the rumba. Now, we were known for our pasa doble and jive, but again, if you defend that title, there is no room in your head for complacency because it is one mark that can make or break a championship. And that happened in 1994. So we go into pasa doble and I'm humble. But to see five first places makes you really feel damn good when your favorite dance is also being appreciated by the judges. And uh, well, so his, history repeated itself again. Now we won both. Both couples won two dances. And yet again, two years in a row, it was the jive. And what was lovely? In 1994, because we were not, we, no one thought, realized, or would even imagine that we win the world championships in Germany with the German couple in their hometown. So no one came. We had one bus. It was my parents, my grandparents, Julie's boyfriend, Rude, and Julie, and I, and our masseuse that took care of our bodies in between uh, the rounds. And so now that we are the current world championships, a whole bus load of friends, fans that wanted to sign up to join. So the whole and the short side of the ballroom was orange. That's why I'm wearing orange. I'm talking about the national color of Holland. Yes, our flag is red, white, and blue, but the national color is uh, orange because of our royal house. It's the color orange. Anyway, so when we did our jive, we did it in front of, I can say our own audience, that helps. Oh my gosh, that helps and that took off some stress. Well, now the moment supreme, uh, the moment of truth. Um, and I don't know where we were in the lineup, but we were not the first couple. So we had to wait a little. 
Well, the Germans, I believe, got two or three firsts, but not majority. And then it came to us, and we had the four firsts that we needed. Oh my gosh, of course we were emotional, but instead of crying because what just happened, we didn't expect this in 1994, we were overwhelmed and now we did it. Relief. Oh my gosh, we were relieved. Of course we were excited and happy, but the emotion, winning for the first time versus defending your title and then winning, what a different experience. And I must say, I enjoyed 1994 a lot more than 1995, but the hindsight feel, or the, the feeling the day after, so now let's compare the Monday after 1994 when I was depressed. We were both depressed. Now what? But then we gave ourselves a few days. We set that goal. We want to win the Grand Slam, meaning all six competition and championships in the world, the biggest ones. And if we win all of those, no one can say that that was given to us because we showed up time and time again. Well, this was the World Championships in September and we still had the International at the famous Royal Albert Hall in October. We were relieved, we were excited, but we had a goal to finish. We needed one more championships. So, we go, we gave ourselves a few days, yes, but we were back in town, boom, boom, boom. We needed to go into the international and the international is not visual marking. It is just, boom, you hear the results. And we won. Another dream fulfilled. All six in one year. And why am I emotional now? Gosh, it's again that feeling when people say, no, you can't. Yet another goal achieved stating the opposite. So for all of you that have dreams, please do. Dream, dream big, set goals, and go after it. Oh my gosh, the blood, sweat, and tears you're going to have to put into yeah, you're going to have to put into, but it's worth it. I can tell you from, I mean, I can tell you from the heart. I lived it. I'm still living it. Different dreams, different goals at 52. So, um, 1995 was an amazing year because we now won all six and we announced that we are turning professional. And in November, um, we have the Dutch Open. And now we were the proud two-time world champion on behalf of Holland. And we did a show, which turned out to be our show dance for 1996. And we sat down, set the strategy for 1996. And we wanted to win the Rising Star Championships at the United Kingdom Championships and work our way to the finals at the professional level, which we probably need three or four years to break through into that final because a new amateur never really makes it into the final right away. So we had a workout out for us, but since we both did all forms of dance, show dance, was going to be our first goal to try and go. And you know, within two, three years, that we might, by 1998, that we might be world champion show dance, and then maybe by 99 and 2000, maybe world champion. Now, looking back, as I say this, that was the goal that we set. And I can tell you in my next podcast, I will tell you that none of that well, some of it happened, but with the lightning speed that it happened with, oh my gosh, I didn't see that come yet again. Thank you for listening, for me explaining to you and sharing with you how amazing 1995 was, even though it was stressful, 
We set goals and we achieve them. Every single one of them. And I'm damn proud of us. Thank you.